The Toronto Blue Jays have gotten spring training underway against the Pittsburgh Pirates. And as at the time of this recording, they are currently in the fifth inning against the Pirates. They're up 6-4. So we're going to be reacting to what we saw in the first half of the game, as well as much more in this episode of Jays Digest. What's up, Jays fans? I'm your host, Peter Briones, alongside host Nick Goss. And I'm so happy to be bringing you guys this video today because baseball is officially back. We're seeing a couple of new rule changes in effect today. And the Blue Jays, you know, the boys are back. They're on the diamond. They're hitting nukes. They're pitching well. And we're just excited to have baseball back again. Yeah, it's finally here. It's been a, uh, a pretty long offseason. Obviously, it's pretty eventful, but we're finally here. Make sure to hit the subscribe button. We're going to have tons of content for you guys in a bunch of different ways, live streams, things like that. So make sure to hit the subscribe button. But let's get into the breakdown and let's get into the first, I guess, topic, which we'll get to start with is Yusei Kikuchi dominated. Now, obviously, the storyline coming into this game, um, obviously, you know, Vladdy is, of course, hitting. You have Edison Berger, who was announced in the lineup this morning. But we knew for the past couple of days that Yusei Kikuchi was going to be, you know, the starter. And John Snyder put a lot of expectations on him before the game, basically saying they want him to attack. He is, and it's been kind of publicly known that he's battling for the number five start. And he has the spot kind of secured, assuming nothing goes horribly wrong. But he went out there and did pretty, pretty good. I'm trying to be saying usual disclaimers about spring training, but Yusei Kikuchi got 14 swinging strikes and 33 pitches over two clean innings. And you can check here with uh, some of the pitches that he was doing were just absolutely phenomenal. Wipeout slider. His fastball was touching 95, 96. And the big thing is, and I'll let you touch on this now, he looked extremely confident. And alongside being confident, he looked, the pitch clock seemed to be helping him a little bit, but I'll let you touch on that now. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. I I mentioned it to you, Nick, uh, over text that the pitch clock might be his best friend this upcoming season because he's got less time to think and you could tell last year when he was pitching, he would, you know, take his time in between pitches and he was kind of fighting himself and, and saying, OK, I got to throw this pitch there. I got to throw this there. And it just was not conducive to him being successful on the mound. But now he's got 15 seconds and he knows he's got to release that pitch. And, you know, his uh, his location was pretty solid. Five strikeouts over two innings, which is phenomenal for Yusei Kikuchi. Uh, his new and improved curveball was there as well it was around 81 82 miles an hour had good break on it uh, but a couple of things that we do need to remember about spring training is that the pitchers have the advantage because they report before the hitters do and they um you know they start throwing bullpens before hitters start seeing live pitching so you know i'd, I'd like to see a little bit more consistency going forward throughout the spring from yusei kikuchi and i want to see a few more fastballs being thrown by him as well because he was very slider happy although it was working you know you can't necessarily be predictable either you got to go fastballs and and a ton of other pitches but everything was working for him and i'm glad that he looks confident out there yeah that's about as good as a, of an outing that you can really uh, expect that a use of kikuchi and you know i'll pop up his stats here now from the night one hit five k's two innings and the hit was actually an infield like kind of weird thing where kikuchi slipped and fell so other than that, he didn't really give up any... Uh, honestly, the hardest hit ball he gave up was uh, the one where Nathan, Nathan Lukes caught it in center field. That was probably the hardest hit ball he gave up. But other than that, it was some pretty, uh, really inspiring stuff. And, you know, it gives me some confidence for Yusei Kikuchi, which is something we all needed. But let's now get into some of the more fun stuff, which is Vladdy shining. And Vladdy, of course, coming off of a very good year. Obviously not the year that he wanted, not the year that some of the Jays fans wanted. But he started off the game, of course, with a double play. And some people on Twitter are making jokes. But then he came back and hit an absolute nuke, which I'll show you right now. With a bat flip, you can have a look at it. Crushes the pitch, bat flips <laughs> off David Bednar, who is oh, yeah. a very good reliever, someone that the Jays were actually, you know, kind of linked to a little bit, but uh, it's just unbelievable out of Vladdy. And uh, I'll let you get your thoughts on that before we get some reactions uh, from, from Twitter. What are your thoughts on Vladdy's uh, home run? Yeah, he's got to get the ball in the air as much as possible because when he does, he does damage. And, uh, and he... Hits the ball pretty much as hard as anyone, barring maybe Aaron Judge or Shohei Otani or Mike Trout, you know, some of those superstar names. So if he gets the ball in the air all year long in 2023, I mean, you're going to see the home run numbers skyrocket. You're going to see his batting average skyrocket as well. And uh, that was a big problem with him. It was the launch angle last year. He was beating it straight into the ground quite a bit, hitting into a lot of double plays, which was caused for some of the memes that you see on Twitter every now and then when Vladdy hits into a, to a double play. But yeah, if he gets the ball in the air, he's going to be 
uh, he's going to be an elite hitter again, or, or one of the elite hitters in the league, once again, I should say, and probably has the chance to be the best hitter in the league if, if he does get it in the air more more frequently. I agree, and it's very, very promising. Obviously, you have the Roger Center dimensions, which will help him a little bit, but it doesn't matter where that ball was, or what park that ball would have been in. That one was, uh, it was well gone. A couple of reactions from, you know, some Jays fans saying, Vladdy is already in midseason form, and so are his bat drops. And against David Bednar, no less. Wow. And honestly, that is kind of probably the biggest story here was, of course, that it was a Bednar. It was 432 feet to left center. But, you know, David Bednar isn't just a random reliever that the Pirates have. He's one of their, if not like one of their best relievers that they have in their bullpen. They sent him out there for obviously the heart of the order. And uh, and Vladdy went, exactly. he, he went yard and I don't know, super exciting. And something else we're excited about, which we'll get into now, because, you know, the Vladdy thing, you kind of expected, I don't know that home run, but we've been pumping Addison Berger's, you know, tires all offseason long, especially you, Peter, and uh, he make, he's making an impact already as he also hit a home run. And this one was, uh, I'll say, almost as impressive, if not more impressive than, uh, than Vladdy's home run, but I'll just show you guys right here in case you missed it. The video's cut off a little bit, but you can see it here now. Just absolutely, also off David Bednar, crushes it to right field. And Peter, I'll just let you take over now. I'll show you guys one more time while you're talking about him. What are your what are your thoughts on him or what you saw from him at the plate in both of his appearances? David Bednar gave up four home runs all of last season, and he gave up two in that inning to the middle of the Jays order, which is missing uh Bo Bichette, missing um George Alejandro Kirk as well. Yeah, George Springer. And uh, you know, so they did their damage against a pretty good arm in David Bednar. And that's the one thing that really stood out to me. Um, this is not Barger hitting against some of his uh, minor league counterparts. This is him doing it off an all-star from last season. So uh, I don't know if I'm going to expect that all year long from him, but you see the confidence in his swing. You see the confidence that he has just taking the field. And and he's got swag, man. He's got swag, and it just stands out. His swing is violent. He's, he's all or nothing, and, and I guess that's a good thing coming from a bench piece, which Addison Barger has a real chance to be this upcoming season. Yeah, and I guess we'll touch on that a little bit now. People in our Discord throughout the game are, of course, talking in there. So you can join that if you want, but obviously Biggio struck out his first at-bat. Then you see Barger go yard. The question becomes now, obviously, they're not, or you don't think they're going to bring Barger up to start the season because he hasn't played very much or too much in the minors, especially at you know, AAA, but... What do you think? What do you think about him? You know, being maybe being the replacement for Biggio because if not, there's no real slot between Biggio Espinal, who we'll touch on, who yeah. also had a phenomenal game today, going two for two with a home run, and uh, there's not much room for him. But maybe they, uh, maybe he forces his way onto the team. Well, we've said it, Nick, all off season long that if Biggio does not perform, then Addison Barger is the guy that is destined to take his spot. You know, that kind of utility utility left-handed hitting infielder that can play a little bit of outfield in a pinch. And, you know, he's that type of guy. He's versatile. He hits for power. He's got a good eye at the plate. He's just an all-around good player. He's got a great arm, which is suited for a utility player as well. Much better than Kevin Biggio's, I may add. So if Biggio does not perform, and I think this is his last chance to do that, then Barger is destined to take his spot. Although I think the final roster spot is going to be a toss-up between Otto Lopez, Nathan Lukes, and Addison Barger. And I might be leaning more towards those other two guys because they don't want Barger to ride the pine. They want him to be playing consistently. And I think in 2024, he's going to be like a, a full, full-on full consistent starter in the lineup. Yeah, I agree. Maybe he's the Matt Chapman replacement. Or in an ideal world, you have both of them in there in some way. Who knows how we'll figure that out. Maybe he slides to uh, – someone slides to second base. And I don't know. We're not going to get into that rabbit hole right now. But very interesting to see. Otto Lopez also had a pretty good game. But one final thing we'll touch on now. Um, before I do, i wrap it up. Yeah, this is from uh, on Twitter as well. Starting second baseman. So if that's someone talking about him potentially being a second baseman, which I'm not too sure about simply because his arm is so good that not sure second base would be a thing. But I'll let you quickly touch on uh, Zach Thompson, who had a bit of a rough outing, and Santiago Espinal before we wrap it up. Now, Zach Thompson obviously went out there, gave up a grand slam, didn't get an out before that grand slam, and ended up being very poor. But Lewis had something to say, saying Thompson's bread and butter is the low cutter, and Jansen can't frame anything down there. I don't know if you noticed that. Obviously, it's not Danny Jansen's fault that... Zach Thompson gave up a uh, grand slam, nor does it really matter too much. It is spring training. It's obviously not a great sign, but do you have any thoughts on uh, on Zach Thompson or as well the uh, the other guy you wanted to mention before yeah. we wrap up and talk about Espinal? 
Yeah, you can't write him off after just one outing. But uh, I'm just wondering, what kind of role is he really going to play? Sure, okay, his bread and butter is the cutter low and away, but he throws it at 90. You know, he's a big guy that has no velocity, not much movement on his pitches. And he has str- he struggled with his control. He did last year, and he struggled in this outing with his control. So I think round one goes to Yusei Kikuchi in the battle for the fifth uh, starter spot there. And uh, one pitcher that really did stand out to me, he only faced one batter. It was Jack Sawinski. Uh, it was Jimmy Burnett who stood out to me. He was a lefty uh, with 94-plus velocity, good uh, three-quarter arm slot. You know, he looked solid, has a funky delivery. And he struck out Jack Sawinski, who is a left-handed hitter on the Pittsburgh Pirates, who struggles against left-handed pitching. But, yeah, he looked solid. And now I'm wondering if maybe... You know, he's got a chance to to make the team as the spring rolls along if he can string together those pretty good outings uh, every time he's out there. Yeah, I agree. And, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm super excited. There's not much else to talk about. Obviously, we talked about it a little bit, but Espinal, um, you know, we know what we're going to get from him. Obviously, he had a home run, another hit. If he starts performing really well, it makes it even more difficult for John Snyder. Or it's, easy, it's more difficult, but it's a good problem to have because, of course, Whit Merrifield. But, Hope you guys enjoyed this video. Lots of stuff going down. The games are going to be played a lot. There's not many off days, you know, coming up in the whole season. So there's going to be lots of content to break down. And don't forget, I saw it in the base for earlier in the video, Chad Green. We have him as well halfway through the season coming up. I don't know. I just figured to throw that out there to help battle in the bullpen spot. So it's going to be very interesting. And Addison Berger, he's he's coming for Kevin Biggio's spot. And maybe that has... Uh, Maybe that's in Kevin Biggio's head a little bit. It would not surprise me because that's a tough position to be in. He's had so many years to prove it. But I don't know. Do you have any final thoughts before we wrap it up? Yeah, I just want to thank you all. Uh, we're going to try to be going live for tomorrow's game against the New York Yankees, which will be the spring training home opener for the Blue Jays. So we're excited for that. We're going to be covering the team all spring long, all season long, and we got you covered for everything you need to know, Blue Jays. So make sure to like, comment, subscribe. Just uh, just uh, keep up with us because uh, we got you guys covered for everything you need to know. See you tomorrow.